Schomburg. Um, I have uh, been writing a little bit in the past. I've been writing a few uh, screenplays and a few novels. Uh, I've directed a few films and now there's a new position coming up uh, which is called Showrunner and I wrote a series that will be shot uh, beginning next month and I will be the showrunner whatever that means because uh, in the European context there's uh, I think very different interpretations of this job. I took part in a uh, workshop organized by a few uh, European producers called The Creatives and they um, ask themselves, so what is a story again? Why are we here? What's a series? How could a European network look like? How could be European sto storytelling in terms of a series look like? So each of those producers asked one screenwriter from these uh, different countries um, to come together without any task except thinking, listening, developing a little bit. And this week somehow uh, revolutionized my uh, brain in terms of what an idea is and how you can invite uh, chance and also uh, the collective into this process and how um, after some time when you become a professional then uh, you, you, you just develop in a sense that you already know what it will be and so on um, and it's very structural, it's very from the general into the details, so first you have the general structural, then you uh, uh, work on the details. And we learned just to listen to a detail and let it grow on itself somehow. And uh, yeah, for me th that was really a, a very beautiful process because I was stuck a little bit in this, like, I have to write eight episodes about a financial scandal and there's like, uh, it's just an industrial process of writing. So that really inspired me a lot. Generally, I would say um, a story in film is mostly seen as um, uh, something that is told over a protagonist um, uh, and um, about and the identification of the audience with a character that has some kind of a problem. Um, mostly it's binary problems, so um, there are different concepts in dramatic structure and there's one called want and need, uh, so there's like something that the um, character is aiming for, but then there's like a real, the, the deeper truth in his character wants something else. And so, and um, in different ways, this is a, for me, a weird thing to see a human being. F first, because I don't think there's one deeper truth and also, um, yeah, that you have to decide between these things. That it's 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 a it's a weird concept. I would say. This is what a film story is. A problem has a character, and we follow a character uh, anticipating this problem. Um, and somehow, in most of the movies, then the world around this character is organized through this problem. So, kind of everything that. Um, happens around him in the background um, somehow yeah, adds to this problem or helps him or b b but it's all organized in this uh, somehow narcissistic way. It's, it's, a, it's a weird narcissistic way to see the world that somehow the, all the world is organized just for you. Um, and I have the feeling this idea of storytelling is part of why our planet is where it is right now, that the individual uh, is valued very highly and the collective uh, or also, yeah, the collective is, is not valued very highly. Um, all these stories that work like a messiah stories that are like, in a way, Jesus stories like Harry Potter, uh, Lord of the Rings, also Star Wars. This is all a story of, of um, okay, so, you are now responsible for the fate of the world and um, you're the most important person on, on the planet. And of course this triggers somehow a certain kind of intense feeling, but it's in a way when you look at 
Lord of the Rings now, or Star Wars, or also Harry Potter, it seems so outdated in a way. Somehow, it, uh, at least for me, it doesn't match what the world is about right now. And I have the feeling that it, it, there are a few examples for stories that are really very uh, close or that, that uh, are very intense and who do not really uh, necessarily uh, work the way normal stories work. Uh, and I've been always interested in these kind of stories. A very weird example for a story that is uh, working in a different sense, I would say, is for example Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so the first part of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, I, I'm not sure, I haven't done some research, but in a structural sense, it's very clear that Orlando Bloom should be the main character because his father used to be a pirate, now he's on the good side, and um, like the whole uh, dramatic conflict is, is based on his character. But nobody cares for his character uh, because everyone loves to look at uh, Jack Sparrow. But Jack Sparrow is not a dramatic character in the classical sense. He doesn't have a real uh, development, he doesn't have a conflict in that way. He's just a trickster um, who, who's always a, a character on the side normally. There are so many stories that have like classical dramatic structure and they are just really bad. You just, nobody wants to watch it. And there are a few of them that are really amazing and, uh, you know, it intense and um, surprising and so on. Um, so I, yeah, I think, I think it, it, there's a possibility, but I uh, totally don't know how it will look, but, but I, I like to research about that. When I'm writing, um, very often, conflict is not what I'm. What is interesting for me about this scene, um, and because there are so many people giving notes on on screenplays in this industrial context of a, a series, for example, very often I write a scene, and because I have to write so quickly, I know in a in their kind of idea of structure is not yet prepared very well. But it's still, there's something in the scene that I know it's, it's good. Or, and it's not the conflict, it's a, it's a different idea of um, how we could live together maybe. Uh, and then I have to, in the next steps, I have to like prepare it in a way that, it's, uh, that, it's, you know, that it can be seen in the classical structure. The Coen brothers, for example, um, have, a, have a very specific dramatic structure often. So first they have like, um, like for example in Fargo, they have, a, have good characters and bad characters and they, and they don't mix also. Like Francis McDormand doesn't have like a dark side. But then very often um, in these films at some point it all leads up to one showdown, but the showdown doesn't happen. It's, it, there's just a vacuum and then suddenly you see two people talking for half an hour, you know. Um, and, f for example, in the series I'm writing, so there's a, s there's a state attorney and she works for a very, very long time to, to get the gangsters uh, to, to trial and finally there's the big trial and then normally there would be a showdown in court, in a court scene and she would like prove in front of everybody he's guilty and then he was like... Bleh. And this state attorney um, says, um, I don't like to be personally involved because it's about uh, a collective idea of the law being enforced. But, but it's not about my personal idea that I want to punish these guys. It's just uh, so I don't have to go there. You know, there's a colleague who will read it and if it's good, it will stand in front of the court, but it's not a personal thing. So somehow we go somewhere else than the classical confrontation, for example. Uh, yeah, and... Um, I have the feeling there's a lot of, like conflict is just a little um, thing in the whole range of human interaction, of human behavior, of what interests us about a film. Um, that, I mean, I'm, I, I don't have anything against conflict, but um, I think there are so many, uh, s sometimes this idea uh, really narrows the, the, the story. And um, I think it can can be just broader, and all, yeah. And and I and I and I yeah, I like to watch it. I like to write it in a little different way. So I I just think there's a certain 
um, kind of story that comes out of different structures. So people say, well, it's just an empty um, box somehow, but it's still a box that you put something into. So if you work from the general structure into the detail, for example, you will have a certain kind of limitation. Also the other way around, if you look, work only from the detail to the general, you have also a limitation. Um, and of course, structures can also help you to be inspired, um, but, but I really see it as some kind of a um, tool that if you're stuck and if you're not in, in the flow, you can be inspired by it. But um, if you take it as a rule, then you have uh, a lot of films that have a very, that look the same and it's a little boring also. Mm. So in a way I try to um, come into a, some kind of hypnotic state. So I will, so if this would be a scene, I would try to look at things. So um, I don't know, now there's somebody sitting there, somebody's going down there. Oh, there's a, there's a um, rucksack, there's a backpack back there. Is something in the backpack? Um, what's the noise? I don't know. So, so I really try to like meditate myself into the situation and and just um, uh, yeah see what the place asks me for. Um, if you really open yourself up, to other ideas uh, that you don't have. If you think of like turning points and you, you just don't have them. I have the feeling that um, the stories we are telling right now should um, go away from that's the other and that's us and to make this uh, border between. So we should really tell stories that show how this border can be, pro can be crossed, um, how we can have a different logic uh, of uh, you know, interacting than uh, to say that's us and that's them. These um, big stories I was talking about earlier, if you look at them now, it's really weird. Like a lot of the rings, I saw it a few months ago, and I thought, this is like such a bad and also, in a way, fascist story, you know, that the dark people from the East come and they, you know, they have, they have the bright, they're only white people who save the earth and so on. It's, it's a weird story, you know, um, and and the whole idea of there are the evil people and there's the good people. Um, I think uh, that that's that's really problematic. I think art in general is just uh, also there to show that um, human behavior, human interaction ha can follow a different logic than, for example, now capitalist logic or. Um, the logic of war, uh, uh, and that there can be like uh, visions, stupidity, uh, just irony, um, nonsense, uh, just all uh, things that that uh, that politics or have lost, or you think no, no, this is like uh, we are the forces of reason, and then you just see that this is like totally irrational and um, unreasonable and it doesn't make sense what's happening. So I think, um, I think this is for me one of the main reasons to tell stories um, apart from yeah, entertainment that somehow I think uh, a story is mainly also just an offer um, and it's also an open offer. Uh, so. Uh, I mean, of course, if I uh, write a scene, I somehow have an idea for it, but also uh, and I have some kind of an idea how a s what a spectator will do with it, how he, he or she will see it. But of course, then it's also possible that it's seen very differently. Mm. Personally, I like to have uh, also an, uh, somehow an ironic layer on the scene that says, oh, but um, it's also the opposite. So I really love it when scenes do like uh, somehow dialectic scenes and they like show both angles. I once uh, did a film about a, a woman who loses her memory and um, 
So she has to reconstruct who she is, and at some point she wants to meet her mother, uh, who, who she has totally forgotten about, so she goes to the old people's home, and her mother has amnesia, uh, has dementia, uh, so, so uh, Alzheimer. So she meets this woman, and they both cannot remember each other, but then somehow you notice, oh, there's a, there's a somehow genetic kind of connection between them, and you see, oh, there's like a deeper biological connection, and at some point um, the woman working at the old people's home comes and says, oh, this is not your mother, uh, you know, your, your mo uh, you, you got the wrong woman. <laughs> So, um, you know, that, that kind of idea that, uh, well, you think that biolo biology is so strong, but this is also a construction. And if, if a scene can do like a very intense feeling of, oh, she found her mother, and then it's also, oh, no, she didn't find her mother. Yeah. So that's um, something I, I like to play with, if, if possible. <laughs> I really like um, people telling me stories, uh, and I... Very often, an inspiration comes from, and I love to listen to people speak about what they what they lived through. But for also for me, um, writing is more an ability to watch and listen. I think um, to 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 see s certain things um, becoming. Uh, something special, uh, yeah. It's a more of an ability to pick a present uh, up uh, than to create a present. I think it's really mainly looking at people and listening to them. I have the feeling that um, it has become a little harder maybe to um, follow a private path in the way you telling a story because um, there's a lot of fear uh, uh, in, in not only in the young screenwriters but also in the producers and uh, TV editors and um, but I have the feeling so I, but no I, I, I absolutely don't know um, what, to, what to give as an advice but um, I would say if you if you manage to um, keep in this whole um, voices that come to you, if you um, manage to listen to something private and to watch something private, to see the world in a mm, private way, that uh, is something that is very unique now, I think, because um, many young people are really trying to fit into what's already there. So I, I have the feeling there's a very strong and important place for people who, who, who have a private angle. I think the only responsibility you have is to uh, art and to the logic of art. Um, and um, this then becomes um, also political um, responsibility, but not in the sense that you're responsible to stop climate change or something. It's um, to show um, show a different logic uh, and um, to open a door to some other um, re reception of the re reality. Thank you. <laughs>